Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of Views from the 906 Podcast. I'm Dylan Hemmela, and I'm joined by Mike J. Williams and Justin Riley. We've been gone for about a month now, but we're back in action. We've missed a lot of stuff, but nothing bigger than last weekend's UFC card. Mike, did you watch the fights? Uh, yeah, it was the worst betting weekend of my life. Uh, I'm I'm ashamed of myself for betting the way I did and disgusting with my losses. What did you bet? Uh, total over the weekend between MMA and NFL, I was one for five. Took a bunch of fucking dogs, and it did not pay off for me at all. Went with a long shot with a five, five-way five parlay. Uh, knew that I probably wasn't going to get it, but would have been fucking nice if I did. Would have been in a... Uh, UFC wise, I took, I took Pettis, Holm, and Cerrone. Okay, um, I mean, I could, I could see it. Yeah, but, well, Justin, you were you were also the only one when Mike was asking for betting advice to not answer it all, and then afterwards he's like, "Hey, I, yeah, well, I would have took him. I would have took Fiera, Fiera or whatever the fuck that guy's name is, Fajada." Oh yeah, sorry, Mike. I should have that one, bud. Sorry. Fucking <sighs> tough. Fucking sizzling Fajita. I would have lost if I, I, if I were to bet too. I would have lost on my picks too. Everybody who I w- thought was going to win, fucking, I probably would have lost three fights at least. I had Connor at least, but you, you see, the thing is, like, you couldn't really pick all the people you thought were going to win because the odds weren't good enough to make it worth it. So you kind of had to go with you know some dogs. Well, then there was just so many like just unknown, unheard of people that were just end up being killers. Like the Macy Barber hurt her leg, so you can't see that coming. And the girl she's fighting, is I would have not decent. picked Roxy to beat her. Yeah, Hell exactly. Me. But you can't see that coming, and then I would have picked Pettis too because strictly I don't really even know who his, the guy he fought was until then. So he's a beast, I, you know, bro. Yeah, literally. So I would have lost. Yeah, it's that's very there. apparent. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's <laughs> let's talk about the let's talk about the main event though. What, what did you guys think? Disappointing. Um, really? My my initial reaction was dis, was disappointed because I was just I was blitzed at that point and I was like, wow, that that's kind of shitty. It, I was just I was in shock because the whole it went time. shorter because you're a cowboy fan. No, I, I I thought Connor was gonna win the fight, but I was I was just in shock, honestly. I, I don't think disappointed is the right word, but I was just in shock of what had happened. I was like, wow, what the fuck? Like Yeah, I guess kind of, I was too. Yeah, I didn't see that coming like no. that quickly. I thought it would go into at least the second round and just let him feel it out, but he came out swinging, man, and that's what he wanted to do. Fuck it. So do you do you guys think that I was think that whole... was more of Connor McGregor like like just being that good, or you think Donald Cerrone choked? I hear a lot of people saying that. I just think it was more of McGregor just Got him with a kick, man. He just he got him with a kick and broke his fucking was, nose and orbital, and he was already stunned. Well, he was those, ready sh- for this those fight, shoulder man. shots that he was throwing, I mean, everything was. I mean, he came out hard, swinging with the left hand. That you kind of figured that was going to happen. Should have taken him down right there. He overextended bad on that. Well, left that's hand. what that's what Connor but said. Cerrone, Cerrone, all uh, the whole build up to the fight has been had said that he was going to keep it on the feet. He's not going to take it to the ground. Well, that's his own fault. Connor came out and said that he had realized every time uh, he faces a southpaw like Till or something, anytime they throw a left, that he ducks down and goes for that takedown. So Connor was literally waiting for that, and that's when he threw his like hip and like thigh, knee area into his fucking yeah. jaw. Basically, he was waiting for that. He knew that was coming, and I don't know. I, I loved Connor's demeanor the entire week. I watched every little me minute too. of content that was out there. He yeah, looks great. Too. He's built now. I mean, his his focus is back where it was before. He's hungry. He just wants to prove everybody wrong and, you know, basically put on for his team and his family and his friends. You know, he was, he's got tired of letting people down and now he's back. Was that at 170? It was, I was just about to say, I do not like him at 170, but he did look good. But Cowboy is also pretty much a blown up 155 or two. But Connor, Connor looked good. I think he's good at 170. I mean, Oh really? You want, you you think, you think he'd have a good chance against uh, Usman? No. Hell no. No, I'm not saying, I'm not saying stay in 170 and, Go for the belt. I'm just saying there's fun fights at 170. That Masvidal fight is a fun fight. I don't care what anybody says. That's a great fight. Masvidal is also like a blown up 155er though too. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah, that's what I mean. Like I I don't want you to sit at 170 and fucking beat yourself up through the ranks and shit. But there's some fun fights, man. Hell yeah, there is. He he has a lot of options. I mean, he could. What what I've been hearing is since Tony and Khabib are going to fight in April, that kind of puts you know that out of there. And then also Dana pretty much just said he's going to do Usman and, and uh. Masvidal, so that kind of puts that out of there. So if he's not going to fight Justin Gaethje, he might take a fucking boxing fight. Unfortunately for for the hardcore fans. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know if he waits. He could, he could wait, and they could fight in the fall, and then he could fight in the winter too. 
if he wants to get three fights, but I don't know if he wants to wait. And if he doesn't want to wait, then maybe the boxing route is the best option at this point. Unfortunately. Yeah, because if you want the Khabib fight, do you really want to risk fighting it's Justin Gaethje or somebody beforehand? Exactly. And that, that's what they were saying. That's the point. So if Dana's already basically granting it to him, then I don't know. He's going to have to wait till after that fight. If he does beat Ferguson and then after Ramadan. Interesting that uh, Dana had said, you know how they have backups uh, more recently? They bring a backup to a big fight in case somebody doesn't yeah. make weight or whatever. Dana mm -hmm. said that he'd be down for Connor to do that in that Khabib and Tony fight. But how does that work out? Like, you're just going to have Connor, Khabib, and Tony's team walking around together? Yeah, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't think you can do that. I don't think you can do that with Conor McGregor because you, if Khabib, you're going like, to use him, you kind of have to promote it. Well, that, yeah, I understand that aspect, but also just the animosity. Like, Khabib has a fight against one of the harder fights he's going to have against Tony Ferguson. Now you're going to bring Conor and his whole team in there and just kind of, it's just going to bring that tension that's just, For it's, not fair, it's not fair to Khabib, yeah. I don't think Conor would do it either, to be honest with you. If, if anybody's getting that backup role, it'd be Justin Gaethje. It should Gaethje be. Gaethje said that he doesn't really want to do that because he wants to have, be actually prepared. So I don't know what they're going to do with that. I, they're just going to have to hope it goes through normal. Yeah, I mean, they've hoped for that fucking, what, four times Four now? times, yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see. Um, so yeah, Conor McGregor's back and I'm, I'm good, definitely man. looking forward to whatever, whatever happens. If he wants to box, if he wants to fight Masvidal, if he wants to fight whoever, I'm on board, man. I'm not, I'm not going to doubt him anymore. Motivated. Do your thing. You're focused. I'm ready to fucking be entertained. Honestly. As long as he acts like that and he looks like that, I'm, I'm ready to, to see whatever he does. Missed a lot of, uh, NFL football and college, I guess the national championship while we were gone. The Titans were, were kind of a huge surprise. Start with that Titans and Patriots game, man. What in the I mean, hell? That's crazy, man. The Titans are the sleeper. I guess they were the sleeper team of the freaking whole playoffs, right? Just, just hard nosed football. Gonna we're gonna fucking, we're gonna put up points on the board. Then we're gonna run the piss out of the ball and play great defense, and you're not gonna be able to come back. Would you guys think of that Titans and Patriots game? You think that was more of them just grinding it out and keeping it out of Brady's hands, or what, what did you guys make of that game? I just think their defense is incredible. And then, obviously, Derrick Henry and their, their run game. I mean, literally just running in defense. And they did the same thing to Baltimore. Like, their defense just shuts you down, and they take the ball for fucking nine minutes of drive, and game's over. Right? I was I surprised. Mean, crazy. It's just crazy. New England had the best defense in all football this past season. For sure. And, for sure. and the, off, the offense only had Tom Brady. I mean, yeah. granted, granted, the Titans really only. Well, the Titans have, uh, who is that? That Brown, the rookie. There's a couple um, people they got. Yeah, their secondary on, is nice, man. On top of Derrick Henry, and their defense is good. Plus, Vrabel is, uh, he it's falls out of the, he falls out of the Belichick coaching tree. So, I mean, there's obviously. Uh, he he knows what he's, he's ready doing for that game. when he's that calling game plays and stuff like that. Yeah. Exactly. I, I wasn't um I wasn't too surprised by that. It was a surprise, obviously, but I was more surprised really? at them beating Baltimore. That was the more surprising thing to me. That Word. game was crazy, dude. I cannot believe Baltimore looked that bad. I don't I don't know what to make of that. That was nuts. I couldn't believe that happened. Yeah, I, I give more credit to Tennessee. I mean, but again, Baltimore guess, yeah. Baltimore last year, I think they lost to the Chargers or something in the playoffs. Like they just. For whatever reason, this they get the, the year playoffs. That they and, look, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll see. And they're, you know, obviously Lamar Jackson's still young. They're gonna, they're gonna be great for years to come. But oh, for sure, they got to figure it out in the playoffs. Okay, Packers fans, let's talk about the first one. <sighs> talk about the Seahawks game. I mean, I, I expected them to win. I didn't, you know, it was a little the closer. Game? Yeah, I it was a little closer than I had hoped, but. You come through, and then there's the there's the first down at the end, which people are bitching about. But it, that is yeah, what it is. What it is. That's, I don't really that's, that, did, that didn't decide the game. Yeah, exactly. Like that's they've been winning games like that the entire year, yeah. so it's it shouldn't come to a surprise to anyone. And I mean that's that's how they've been. They they're either playing from behind or else they get a quick lead and they're struggling to keep it, but somehow stay on top. Those those two teams are so evenly matched, man. They yeah. can play ten times and probably have. A different winner, you know, they probably split five out of five. It's always a good matchup between those two. I love that playoff matchup between those two. And then they go and play San Francisco. So what do you guys think of that? I mean, just outmatched, just completely outclassed. San Francisco yeah. has a defense that's ready to win a Super Bowl. They got weapons all over the field. Jimmy Garoppolo doesn't have to throw the ball. They're just running the piss out of it. How many times did Jimmy G throw it the ball? Been, eight? Eight, eight times. Eight. It should have been that, Saints and Packers, though. Saints and Packers? 
Saints and Packers. The Saints are the only team that I think could actually beat the 49ers. That's what I was thinking. It should have been the 49ers and Saints, but yeah. They should have. The refs missed a complete fucking pass interference call in that 49ers or New Orleans game and caught once again the refs have cost New Orleans uh a potential trip to the Super Bowl. So so what do you think Green Bay needed to change to, to you know get a different outcome in that they game? They don't they just don't have playmakers. You have Devontae Adams, but the difference is in in comparison to like someone like the Chiefs who are gonna have a good shot to beat the Niners, look at all oh, the weapons sure. they have across the field. Tyreek Hill, I'll Travis Kelsey, about. like Sammy Watkins and you have Patty Mahomes like Pat- Patty Mahomes doesn't have to be great he's a good quarterback he can sling it he can make any throw in the book but when you have weapons like that like how can you not be successful and then he is great on top of that yeah exactly just legit weapons if the Packers had I mean maybe even one to two more pieces on offense but who's who's going to be a guy that's going to we need someone like a Tyreek Hill someone who can make a play downfield and yeah, give Aaron a shot to throw the ball they got the, big, they the biggest thing this year. The biggest thing that I saw in that San Fran Green Bay game is that the the edge rushers for San Fran got so deep in the backfield all the time that Rodgers wasn't able to escape the pocket. They yeah. basically f- formed a tight knit pocket around him, so he wasn't able to get out and extend plays like he usually does, which caused in in return the wide receivers weren't running all the way across the other side of the field trying to get open for him yeah. because he's. Aaron Rodgers is where he's designed to be and not where he actually wants to be. I yeah, didn't notice Green Bay's line was that bad. I thought they were like middle of the pack, like decent, but they they got exposed I mean, kind of in that game. Are they bad or is I mean the the Niners have drafted D linemen for the past of, five years or something? A little bit of both, but but is, hasn't that kind of been a problem all year? Yeah, hasn't he absolutely been on his back all year. It's 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 a weakness in you know if if we're not if we if we weren't going to get offensive linemen that's why I said receivers but yeah the glaring hole would be hey we need an offensive lineman to shut this defense down but that I, Niners defense is just so good but, man I mean, but why you, the pack, don't, don't the they Packers have a bunch old, of don't they have a bunch of like veteran offensive linemen though like but what's the name Bak- Bakhtari whatever Bakhtari, they have, yeah they have, they have a few like veteran why like are they not gelling I mean I'm telling you man that Their Niners D line is just it's something else yeah. Their offensive line isn't bad by any stretch. Bulaga and Bakhtiari are That's what I'm saying. They're, they're top they're top five tackles in the league. Plus, you bring in the free agent Billy Turner um from Denver. He was a solid pickup in free agency. And um there's the rookie, the other rookie guard, Elton Jenkins, who did okay, but um I think losing Corey Lindsley at guard, that that really fucked him up. Um because then your inside protection shot. But like I said, with that 49ers game, that's those edge rushers are so fast off the ball and got such a good jump off the snap and just blew them back into the backfield that there there was there was no plays to be made. Yeah. And that just I mean, what are you gonna do? You can't right. there's no there's no scrambling, they're in your face. You know, you don't you don't necessarily have like great receivers to make plays and be open for him. So then you see Aaron, you know, just getting hit over and over again because there's nowhere to go with the ball. Yeah, he he's getting hit. That. He's getting hit. He's getting pressured. And another big thing is like Aaron Rodgers doesn't turn the ball over, and that's a huge, huge upside. But he doesn't turn the ball over because he doesn't take the chances, risks yeah, exactly. that he doesn't he takes chances, chances situationally when there's like four seconds left and a half or at the end of the game, he'll throw a bomb down the field and will it get picked? Maybe it's a 50, 50 jump ball situation. But during the game, when the team really needs a fire lit up under their ass and a big swing of momentum, he's not the, he wasn't the guy that was giving the team the opportunity to, to get that. Yeah. Well, I mean, he threw for 326 yards, so we are, we are kind of shitting on the offense, but at the same time, like, the Niners ran for two hundred plus yards. Like, I mean, yeah, how but are you he, threw, stop he it? threw he threw for three hundred yards, and he threw for like fucking forty times. Yeah, it's Dude, his, stat, only, his stats were good. He only like had nine incompletions. I mean, they they put up thirty seven on our. You know, what are you what are you gonna do? They rushed for over two hundred yards, put up thirty seven points. I mean, how much more can you know? And the Packers have been drafting defense, like they they've been trying to bolster that defense. So I think it was just more. Honestly, just I think that was just more. Yeah, I think it was more the 49ers being that well rounded of a team. I, I don't think you should shit on the Packers too badly. No doubt. I think no. there's more of the 49ers. Absolutely. No I agree. The Packers are in the right direction. Their defense is getting better. They're gonna they're gonna be they're gonna be perfectly fine. 
those runs to the outside and then that fullback that they have lead blocking for them. I mean, yeah. you're as a as a running back for the 49ers, you're automatically getting second, third level every single play. Yeah. I mean, they have three right. running backs that could do that at all, you know, at all times. So we'll see. Yep. What, what, do you, what are you guys' uh, picks for the Super Bowl? Kansas Man, City, I, uh, I haven't really thought. I haven't really thought too hard about it. I don't know. Just That's your, a good just game, your though. Initial fucking feeling. What do you got? My initial gut reaction was, I think that. Uh, Man, I don't. Know. I, I I just feel like the Kansas City is going to just like outrun them on the field. But then my other part of me thinks that it's going to be the San Francisco is just going to like be defensive and like take the ball out of Mahomes' hands, and it's going to be like a you know just not a good game for KC. I don't know, man. It's a weird game. I think Kansas City is so explosive. Yeah, and Patty Mahomes hasn't been like he hasn't had to run the ball very often like he did in the AFC Championship game. Like, um, and now, now you're going to be able to, now I think in the Super Bowl, you're going to see the hundred percent plays that are in Kansas City's arsenal. They're going to be pulling every single, uh, trick out of the book, every rabbit up and out of the hat. It's going to be crazy. I think they just have the weapons to get it done. Like the Niners defense is great, but again, if the Packers have Travis Kelsey and Tyree Kill, I think that game goes a little differently. So just just with Kansas City's offense alone, I think they at least make it a better game. I, I don't know. I, I want to say Kansas City wins, but, man, I mean, just the not, the way the Niners have been playing all year long, it's it's hard to bet against them, man. What's the spread on that? Is not is Kansas City like one-and-a-half point favorite? Um, I'm not sure. I'm going to look it up right now. I'm pretty sure it's something like that. So, I mean, it's it, it they, they, they haven't locked it in yet. Um, like I think at the beginning of the week is only like one point, like it'll, it'll one change and a half. over the next week or so. Yeah, but I I think we're in for a good game either way. I don't I don't know. I would love to I oh, would love to see game. Patrick Mahomes versus Aaron Rodgers, but you know it is what it is. We're gonna get you no know, good game either way, and hopefully I just don't want to see San Francisco pound the piss out of the ball for fucking for sixty minutes. You know I don't want to see them just run and run and run and run and run. Hopefully Kansas City can shut them down a little bit and make it an interesting game. KC has spread. A, like a decent front a front seven. I think they should be a little okay with that. Yeah. The spread is two points uh advantage to the Chiefs at minus one thirty. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's I, surprising I guess. actually. But the San Francisco like San Fran is only a plus one ten. So uh, yeah, it's not really it's, it's pretty it's, much a pick 'em. It's pretty close. Yeah, it's fifty fifty. I don't know, but yeah. that that'll that'll change. Treat. That'll change come Friday. Oh, um, for sure. What did you guys think about the national championship, Clemson and LSU? Did you guys watch that game or care about it at all? I watched, I watched a little I just, bit. I thought it. Trevor Lawrence looked shook. He looked weird. I don't know. He didn't play like he did the other times I've seen him play this year. Yeah, it did, it did look a little strange. And I give a little credit to LSU's defense, but yeah, he just there was something a little off. He he just you know he wasn't the gunslinger. But again, I mean that's the best team they've played, so you just never know Clemson. how that changes things. Uh, if, if I can bet on, um, the national championship next year, I'm betting all my money on Clemson. Oh, absolutely. And they're running, oh, they're be, running yeah. backs coming back for a senior year. They're going to be great. Trevor Lawrence sure. is coming back. Yeah. Like, I just think LSU is just has so many like athletes all over that field, man. It's kind of hard to keep up. They were a dominant team this year and they just, they did, Clemson, it. did Clemson win, win it last year? Oh, yeah. Cause it was yeah. Lawrence's uh, yeah. true freshman year. Yeah. No, he he couldn't have been a true freshman because he was draft eligible this year. He had to have been a sophomore. He was a freshman well, with he was Deshaun Watson, redshirt, redshirt or something. Then because I know it was he was young. No, for he's sure. not. He's not draft eligible. Yeah, he is. No, 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 no. Are you sure, Mike? I'm pretty sure he was a true freshman last year and they won it. And then this year he's a sophomore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He won as a freshman. He wasn't under Deshaun Watson. So he is draft eligible going I, if, into this if, draft. I guess if I don't know. Let's see. Trevor Lawrence. Two years. Either way, he's he, gonna he's gonna be there, and they're gonna be fucking great. Yeah, go Tigers! Yeah, this, is, this, this, is, year, this was his second year. Yeah, but yeah, uh-huh. that that team's gonna be nasty. But again, when you're playing in the ACC, you know, you kind of it, it's gonna be an easier road for them. I don't know what, what exactly their schedule is next year, but yeah, when you start playing these SEC teams who are stacked on defense and shit, it just it can go differently. Different ball game. So that was exciting. Huh. What else did we miss? We missed uh, Michigan Tech hockey and a uh, friend of the show, Ray Bryce. They won the GLI. 
that was around New Year's, I believe, in between Christmas and New Year's. Who would they beat? Uh, Michigan. They, yeah. And they've they've in been the in the champion. Yeah, they've been in the championship. Like I think I had, I had seen six out of seven years or something. So I mean, they're God pretty damn. consistent when it comes to the GLI, and they've won I think two out of the past four or five years. So that's good for them. And uh, Ray Bryce has been getting a lot more playing time. So I've seen he's he had a goal a couple weekends back. Uh, I think he might have had another point last weekend or something. So good to see nice. him getting some ice time, and uh, they're doing well. So hopefully they keep it up. Love to see that. Did you um? Justin, have you watched? I know Mike did. Did you watch the uh, Aaron Hernandez doc on Netflix? Oh, dude! Oh, yes, awesome. You I, ju- I just got, I just got done with episode yeah, one. I, oh, okay. I watched yeah, it. it I watched it all in one night. Yeah. You, awesome. So, what do you think, Mike? Awesome. What do you think? What do you think after the first episode, Mike? I only watched one episode so far, too. Uh, pretty crazy. Uh, closet gay. Didn't see that one coming. Bye, bisexual. Potato, potato. <laughs> tomato tomato yeah you're canceled uh, <laughs> i mean just honestly crazy overall like and I, I was listening to brendan Schaub's podcast earlier and i agree with him like it's kind of sad man like i haven't seen the whole thing yet but just the way i already know how everything turns out obviously so like it's just sad man like just all these factors and shit like i'm not giving him any credit by any means but it's just terrible how you know how life can just fucking go ass backwards on you like that the, the, I think the most sad the, the most sad thing was at the very end when they started talking about studying his uh brain because he got a donated to get studied for cte and they just were talking about what it looked like and how bad it was like one that's of the what worst makes me cases sad. ever yeah more or less so just that's what makes me sad like i don't i don't want i don't want to give him a break and say that you know, that's why he did what he did but like still it's sad yeah well when you have that that's when you're playing football and then when you're you, his dad his father passes away and then his mom gets a new boyfriend a couple months later like just all those little and things it, as he's growing up it's fucking crazy right yeah and the boyfriend is like his cousin's husband so it's already a family member. There was a weird <laughs> dynamic there. Yeah. What did you guys think of uh, his high school quarterback and that guy's dad? Like them? In, they were interviews? sketchy, man. I don't. I, there's something off about them. It's I weird. know Brendan said this, but I'm not trying to just regurgitate what he said. But they, I, I agree, man. There was something weird about those two. Like I didn't like. I don't know. It, it, it seems. See, yeah, it seems corny and scripted. Um. I honestly don't really, I don't think I believe that, to be honest with you. I don't know if I believe that. Like, part of me, most of me, does not believe that he was having sex with this kid. Like, Apparently, I don't, you know the guy I mean? that he actually had a relationship has come out and, like, been like, no, this guy's full of shit. That's what Shabit yeah. said on his thing. Like, someone had come out, like, the real guy and said, the no, the guy. Guy, the guy in this documentary is full of shit. Like, and I don't know. I just, I got that vibe, too. Like, you guys are fucking weird, man. Like, just the, way, you, like just the way you're chasers. presenting it. Yeah. You're yeah trying to is be that what you got, too? Like, they were kind of, like, cloud chasing? You're just trying to entertain. Like, I'm here for the fucking story. I don't need your entertainment value. Like, I'm entertained by the story. I don't want you to be fucking goofy in your living room. Like, I don't know. It was, it was just weird. Was I got I to gotta finish man. it. I'm really excited to finish it. But the first That's episode awesome. was great. Those two were weird, though. And the dad sitting next to him, I didn't get that. I don't know why the dad yeah. was there. I've I've had to put down my PS4 controller and turn on Netflix, which has been pretty hard. <laughs> What was uh? What did Marshawn say after their fucking game, man? He said, "Take care of your take, take care, care of your mental, mentals. take care of your chicken, and take care of your something else." I mean, that's just some real ass shit. I got so much respect for Marshawn. This Marshawn whole, Marshawn's top five human beings on the planet. Real ass dude. He just, he, but he also just does it smart, man. Like, hey, who needs a running back for the playoffs? I'm back, bitch. Like, what? I don't have to play all year. I'm gonna come in, get in the playoffs, ride with my boys. And then I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give him some game on the way out, bro. Peace. Like, there's just nothing but he respect. Might come for back. Me. Yeah. Yeah, I doubt he's gonna come back. I mean, you never you know. Think so? but, I mean, he, wh- why not? Why? I'm, I'm not saying for the full season, to, but again, next year Seattle's on the brink of the playoffs. Why not bring him back? Or whoever the Vegas Raiders under Tom Brady, they're on the brink of the playoffs. Bring him in with Barry Sanders too. So I, he's doing it smart. Like, hey, let's not destroy my body. Like, I know I, I have a limited time of playing football if I want to. So fuck it, man. Somebody pick me up in week 15 and we'll, we'll roll into this shit. Is that he's against basically... the rule? Can, can, can he be a rental for playoffs like that every year? I mean, why not? If someone wants to sign him. He signs, a, CB... he signs a contract for a month or two. CBA year this year. So if, if they don't say anything about it, then the rule isn't going to change. And there's there's also bigger issues at hand here. Like I don't give a fuck if Marshawn wants to play in Week 17. 
Like, do your thing. There's there's so many things that need to be fixed, especially in the officiating department in the NFL. So I, I don't know oh, what's going to sure. happen, but it was kind of a shit year for officials. True. I'm pretty interested in um, the XFL. The, the yeah, exactly the XFL. You read my mind. Do you think I, they do you think they stick around for a couple of years? Uh, they have good financial yeah, backing this time. Couple of years, it's 100 we'll percent backed by Vince McMahon, and he's a billionaire. So yeah, that's good. I guess. I, I, honestly, I was watching. I was watching like some of the highlights from the uh, the scrimmages, and the football is not bad, dude. It's like it's like obviously below NFL, but it's like above like good collegiate football. Oh, so it's not bad. You're gonna get everybody who can't play in the NFL there. The people who are one step below the NFL are all gonna be there, yeah. right? Or practice squad guys that want to yeah. just get more of shine, get some playing time, so they can get in the NFL. I think it'll be cool because I think a lot of guys will play really good in the XFL, and then I think that we'll shot. get a few guys get picked up by the NFL. Well, it was like that in that other league. What had come out was it the AAF or some AAF, shit? AAF, whatever. Yeah. The fuck that was. So a, a couple guys ended up getting signed to some NFL rosters when they uh, when that league went to shit after yeah. like three weeks and they went bankrupt. Who? Who? And Andrew Lux. Andrew Luck's dad is like the GM of the XFL. Really? Is that his dad? I know his last yeah. name is Luck. It's his dad. Yeah, Oliver Luck. Yeah. Yep. Um, I saw a rumor today that's the next quarterback of the New England Patriots. Andrew Luck? Imagine? Yeah. Could you imagine? I mean, that's the, that's the move right there. He would be so set. If you're going to come back, why not go to the Patriots? He would be fucking in heaven if he could go there and start there. As a Patriots what? fan, what do you want to happen to Tom Brady? As a Patriots fan, what do I want to happen to Brady? Yeah. You want him I'd to come like back? To see, yeah, I'd like to see him get like a, another one-year deal and then pretty much make it Knowing that it might, it's probably his last one, and then I like to see him just see what he looks like this next coming year. And if it's not good, then he can retire. And if it's good, then I don't know, he could probably still retire. But does he go to Vegas or Los Angeles? I hope not. I just, I just want to see him have one more year. Do like what Jeter did, like announce it before the season. You go on like your retirement tour. You know, I like that. What sucks is he's not good. like bad. I mean, who is he working no, he's, with he's this good. year, man? They didn't like Patriots, another team that nobody just didn't have weapons, man. That's the whole, like and it, that's that's my question of why Andrew Luck would go to the Patriots. Other than Belichick, what else is like? Well, what incentive that, is there to go there? You can, I mean, they can get pieces, and that's just established success. Like, if you're going to come back and you're worried about all these injuries, are you going to go back to the Colts and hope something happens, or are you going to go to an established organization that you actually have a better chance to win? A well, the Patriots would the Patriots would have to buy him out from the Colts. Yeah, or they could just release him. Here's the good question for you guys. Okay, Which so if, and, if Andrew if Andrew Luck was like, you know, I don't know, in his prime, I guess you could say whatever. If he was like, you know, like in his sort of prime, if he was on the Patriots team this year, do you think their record or they would have done th- anything no. any different? No, absolutely I'm not. Just, I'm, I'm, I want to know like what you guys think of him compared to Brady. Uh, I, think, as a quarterback. I think at this point he may he has a higher ceiling, but at this current point, if it's Luck versus Brady – I don't, you know what's what's really the difference? It's fucking it's so marginal. Maybe some maybe some arm strength, I yeah. guess. I don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't think mobility, I don't think Brady fell mobility. off. I think he just doesn't have anything, which is crazy because sure. in in mid season, I mean, they had so it seemed like they had so many weapons. You Antonio had Antonio Brown, literally. Yeah, and Edelman was healthy. Josh Gordon, that first that first overall the overall pick, not overall, but the, you know first round pick, uh, Keneal Harry, and then you had Josh Gordon. And Gronk just retired. They, like if you had they all had five Dorsett of those guys, too, and they had they traded him because they were getting. Was that during Antonio Brown? They traded him because they yeah, were Antonio somewhere Brown. In there, yeah, and then somewhere the Antonio there. Brown thing doesn't work out. So now you just lost a promising young receiver. Man, I wish they would have kept Brown and Gordon. I know you can't keep Brown because of what he's going through, but damn, man. Uh, speaking and of Antonio what, Brown, what exactly what is Josh Gordon? What's Josh Gordon doing? He's in Seattle. I he think. was he was in Seattle, but he got suspended again. Remember? Right. We, we yeah, about that's what time. I'm like. It's gonna be a long road for him if he ever wants to get back in the NFL. This is like his fourth strike, so he's gonna he's got he's got a battle ahead of him. And it never came out what exactly. In, they never clarified whether it was marijuana I mean, because they had said was, performance enhancing as well. So nothing. It ever was came bad. En- it was bad enough to get him indefinitely suspended. So yeah. I mean, it's you know, it's gonna to be tough for him. Yeah, but see the same thing with Russell, man. Like you get a weapon like Josh Gordon, and then he goes down. Like that just kind of screws him a little bit. It just sucks, you know. They got a lot of young talent on that Seattle team, and they're going to be good in the future. But he's another guy that doesn't really have any receivers. Exactly. Yeah. Doug Baldwin might be their best receiver, right? I don't know. They got um, what's his DK six, Metcalf. They got Metcalf, and they also oh, have yeah. um, what is okay. his name? Lockett. Yeah, I guess. I mean, Lockett. You know, Lockett's a legit okay. weapon on that team, and Metcalf. I mean, what a rookie year for him. He's a fucking sure. animal. Yeah. 
So that, that's that's just another team where like it's it's a little different because they have young talent that could actually come up. It, whereas the Packers had like four undrafted free agents at wide receiver. Like it's a little <laughs> different there. Well, all white guys, but they're gonna be good, man. Um, back to Antonio Brown though. I mean, have you guys been paying attention to all Something the shit that's been going today, down? Right? Yeah, some sort he, of battery charge at his house. Him and his, what, him and his agent, or him and his like manager. His, his, his trainer got arrested for battery, and they couldn't. But they're looking for yeah. AB though too, because yeah. he, he he supposedly did it too. So I don't know what the fuck's going on, man. But there was the video of I, I guess that's his girlfriend or whatever taking his kids. There was some dispute at his house, and the cops were there, and he's like calling them pigs and shit, and like, man, he sent a lot of disrespectful shit to them. He's lucky he didn't get <sighs> fucked up. Just terrible, man. I don't know whether to feel bad for him or just think he's a fucking prick. No, he's a piece of shit, dude. Don't feel bad for him. But yeah, I mean, dude, he's fucking, look, look at what we just said about Aaron Hernandez, man. bro. You know what I'm saying? Like afterwards, and all this shit starts coming out. Right now, he seems like a piece of shit, and I've I've publicly said that, like, fuck this guy. But at the same time, when we start looking in hindsight, man, and you start finding out all these factors, and maybe there's a touch of CTE, like, it, it's just was sad. Antonio Brown really being as physical as Aaron Hernandez, though? Probably not. Probably not, but no, he but still he got. I mean, I mean Montez Perfect himself probably knocked him out twice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, literally. I mean, fuck. I mean, it's just still, however many years of football is just going to add up, and that maybe that could not have anything to do with all this. But it's just a sad situation either way, man. Like whether he's a prick or not, it's fucking for sad for man. everything. Yeah, you were on top of the world, bro. You have everything. You pissed away your relationship with the Steelers. You went to Vegas or to Oakland. Thought you were gonna have a great time there. You pissed away that relationship. He, he made to, that. He made himself get released, though. He remember yeah. all the bullshit he was doing there. That's what I'm saying. People you're just, forget you're that just burning bridges constantly and just fucking yourself. Uh, you were Close the number England. one receiver in the NFL. And Close New England up. sends a bunch of messages like threatening the accuser. Like he's an idiot, man. It just sucks, man. It's it's really shitty to see. Yeah, I don't know what to make of that. I I yeah. I feel bad, obviously, for his family and his kid. But as far as him, he just, I don't know, Aaron Hernandez, He's doing wasn't, it to like, himself. Yeah, Aaron Hernandez wasn't like farting in like his chiropractor's face and like <laughs> laughing about it and like trying to box Logan Paul. Like he wasn't yeah. doing that shit. Yeah. Honestly, it's, to me, it's almost a social media problem, man. Like he's like, he's so addicted to like clout and fucking just talking his shit online and doing all this weird ass shit. Just you remember him celebrating man. getting, getting released by the Raiders? Yeah. Literally running outside. Like what an idiot. I don't know, man. You can't do that. He's, I don't know. People think he'll come back. I don't think he'll play in the NFL again. Who's going to take a chance on him? Why would yeah, you want that on your team? I don't, I wouldn't, I, I, don't, I wouldn't want that. He's never coming back. I mean, what's it worth? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. What, it's, what it's, is it worth? it's not, it's not worth the headache that AB is going to bring to you in the, in your team. Yeah. Nope. I mean, he fucked over the Raiders pretty bad, man. Like they bring really him in, bad. take a chance on him and he just fucking, just demands his way out. He freezes From the his minute fucking he was feet. There. He's complaining. He's bitching about his helmet. Nobody else in the league. I mean, how many players in the NFL? Like, I don't even know what the fucking number is, but nobody else Not has an issue up with the that practice. helmet. It's, I don't know. He's, I don't know. It's just. Yeah, he made, he made, he made, he forced their hand. He made them trade him. Or not, you know, trade him, but release him. I, he yep. really made, yep. I think I, he made the long con to get to the Patriots and then fucked it up. Yeah, he probably. I think he regrets that. It's just unfortunate because that's when the you know sexual assault allegations and stuff come out. So it was just like the perfect storm of fuckery. It's it's almost karma in my opinion. Like you want to fuck off with yep. everybody else, and now you go to the best team and you're balling. And he played. I mean, he might have played three games, two or three games, and had a couple of two, touchdowns. And he looked good. Yeah. And then there you go. Fucking enjoy life, buddy. Yep, that sucks. What else has been going on, man? We've been gone for about a month now, I want to say. What what the fuck else has happened? We had the holidays, obviously, Christmas, New Year. Do you guys have any uh, any any big uh, New Year's resolutions here? Fuck. I'm, no. not much of, I'm not much of a New Year's resolution guy. If I'm going to do something, I'm going to like purposely wait till after New Year's just because I don't want <laughs> to have a New Year's spite. resolution. Out of spite of that, yeah. yeah. I like know me- nothing. With me and trying to do things, it's like, okay, I'm going to tell myself I'm going to do something and I'm not going to tell anybody else because if I tell somebody else, then they're going to expect me to do it. And then it's only a disappointment within myself if I don't do it. <laughs> that's that's one way to look at it. You don't want to let anybody yeah, else down. Nice. Yeah. Or a lot of people know so it puts more pressure on yourself to hold yourself accountable. No doubt. And I can't handle that extra shit. I've, I've never been like one for the New Year's thing. And I, I used to be a person who would kind of shit on it too, just like. 
you guys are fucking idiots. Like you could do this at any point. I don't the shit year. on it. If you need that, yeah. by all means. But yeah, that's what I realized. Like, dude, there's so many people out there that just want to change their fucking lives, man. And that day can be such a boost in the right direction. So like anybody sure. trying to shit on someone who's just trying to get better, whatever, what in whatever fucking facet, whether you want a better job, whether you want better health, whatever it is, like, yeah, let's just fucking, is. you know, let's just bring each other up, man. Like, no, that's how I am. Listen, okay, if I see somebody trying to better themselves, I'm not going to say a goddamn word for at least six to ten months. And then if they're <laughs> still doing that in six to ten months, then I'll give them some praise. But if they've, if they're like, first five months just like on social media like new year new me look at me go fucking gym rat da 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 and then fall off it's like you're a fucking dumb fuck (laughs) like (laughs) jesus christ you're an idiot i i I see where you're coming from but yeah at the same time like fuck it even if it's even if you only lasted a month maybe there i'm sure there's hundreds of thousands of people who have already quit on their resolutions already that's a month healthier yeah exactly like fuck it man i it's that's your business that's your life do your thing that month in the gym might have saved that person yeah. from a heart attack or a stroke. Right. Or I, whatever. I mean, I, I obviously don't speak on those things like to myself or like, or like to anybody I'm not public with yeah, yeah. those kind of things, but it's just like, you see this shit going on and you're just like, I agree. What the, like, what the fuck? Yeah. There's, there's yeah. like, a, there's a happy medium in there. Like, because, sure. because, because you know, you got to know that there's a certain element of attention seeking there. Yeah. yeah. For sure, that's and, why and I it's never easy say this anything. time of year. Yeah, my biggest uh, my thing for the new year, or just just in life in general, is like I've never been one to be super concerned about like my health and like nutrition in general. And just the more I've been learning, like whether it's through Rogan or whatever podcast and Dr. Rhonda Patrick, like bro, the way we fucking eat is just terrible, man. It's just fucking everybody gets Alzheimer's and all this shit, bro. All these fucking problems and cardiovascular problems, and we're just killing ourselves, man. So like. People don't think long term. My biggest thing is like I I want to I want longevity in this life. We only have it fucking once, bro. I don't want to be having heart attacks at fifty and shit. Like I don't know. I'm I'm super conscious about what's going into my body lately, and it's it's made me feel great, honestly. Like intermittent fasting and all this shit. Like I used to nap yeah. all the time. I don't nap anymore. Like I don't know. I'm just I'm just trying to change the little things and just be consistent with it, just to have a better overall life in general. Because, man, it, this shit goes by Makes quick. And if you're fucking off for 20, 30 years, I mean, you're fucked. Oh, yep. yeah. It's so, oh, yeah. like, do you? it's so hard to, like, okay, uh, body-wise, like, health-wise. It's so hard to get in shape and stay in shape. Where, like, you have to get up every morning and, like, f- like physically and mentally prepare yourself to be up that early and do the things that you're aiming to do. Where it's so much easier just to fucking hit the snooze Please. button, yeah. take that extra five minutes, you know, fucking grab a grab a croissant on the gas station on your way to work and fucking do the damn thing and just gain fifteen pounds in a month. But it's well, the thing is, it's really not that difficult, man. Like for the intermittent fasting piece alone, like if you just stopped eating at seven p.m. and you didn't eat again till noon, like the things your body does internally with your gut and shit and your microbiome of your gut, it, it's life changing shit. It's fucking life changing. Your yeah, chances right of Alzheimer's go life. down forty percent. Your chance of cardiovascular disease goes down fucking whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't have the exact science. I'm not a scientist, but just the things I've been reading and listening to, it's fucking insane, man. And it's not that hard. You don't have to wake up at five a.m. and go kill yourself in the gym. You literally. Just have to focus on what goes into your fucking body. Diet, of course. 90%. Yeah, literally. You exercise will help, but if we just eat better and t- treat our bodies in the right way, I mean, it can change your entire fucking life. Will I look like Terry Crews? I mean, no, but you unlikely, be healthy. You know, on the inside. That's my biggest thing. It's not even about the body or like what I look like to me. It's literally my insides and the fucking diseases I don't want when I'm 60, 70 years old. That's what you I'm saying. I think different Fuck because it. you have a kid too, for sure. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. And I've never Things been around, change. I've never once in my life had a strict workout and a strict diet nutrition plan at the same time. I've always ate like shit my entire life, but I played sports year round, so it just didn't matter. One or the other. Yeah. So now that I'm I'm trying to be on track for both, it's like, holy fuck, man. Like, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. And it's just not that hard. You got to do a little research, you got to find out your body and fucking. Just be consistent with it, man. Do it for yourself. Do it for your own fucking life. Yeah, you can't make people want it, though. They got to want it themselves. You sound like fucking Shia LaBeouf, Dylan. 
I don't know. I'm I'm just, I'm, just do it. Do <laughs> it. I'm super turned about this nutrition and shit, man. Like I just all the shit that I've been reading. I don't know. It's it's literally changed my life, and I want my life to stay that way. We're just fucking force feeding ourselves fucking carbs and pizza and shit all day, never giving our bodies a break, man. People just eating and snacking all day long, and we're just fucking killing ourselves. Bro, I fucking Crazy. love pizza. I love pizza, and I've been on such a big pizza kick, and I blame Barstool Sports and fucking Dave Portnoy for it. Mm. With his with his daily pizza reviews, it just makes everybody me want to walk. Everybody knows the rules. It makes me want. It makes me want to. Makes me want to walk down the street to Main Street Pizza, pick up a couple slices, two for one pepperoni, and just fucking devour them on the do walk. Do your home. thing. You know what I'm saying. Enjoy your fucking life, but just do don't do it every do. day. You know what I'm saying. I mean, don't tell me how to live my life, but that's fine too. You know what I'm saying. Fuck <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, don't tell me what to do. You but... and Antonio Brown can fuck off. No, man, I don't. I just, I don't know. That's 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 my New Year's type of thing, I guess you could say. But I agree, more, that's good for me. I I hope it's more of a lifetime thing and not just fucking. You know, it's easy to fall off, and you're gonna dad. have your cheat times. But man, just the health benefits of being strict on yourself is crazy. Yep. Uh, but all right, I guess that's where we cut it off for this week. We will be back on our weekly schedule, updating you guys with all Monday. the current stuff. Um. We'll be posting on YouTube and all the all the podcast platforms. Just be sure to, uh, if, if you fuck with the boys, share on Facebook and stuff. Leave us some comments, anything you want to hear, any anything you have to say about the shit that we're talking. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. We appreciate you.